Hello everyone, this is the Events and Student Affairs Committee on Thursday, March 17th, 2022. I'm calling this meeting to order at 12.04 p.m. I want to acknowledge that the Simon Fraser Student Society and the sub is located on the traditional and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Skohomish, and tsleil tooth peoples um, and Katsi Nations, the one in uh, so-called Surrey. Um, Burnaby Mountains, um, Traditional name is Lokloai Huaitin, um, and it's important to know of whose territories we reside on and the communities that we work with um, and the campaigns that we push for um, regarding climate change, regarding inter um, Indigenous sovereignty, um, all of that, that we continue to do this work moving forward um, as students at SFU. Um, again, unceded means that these territories have never um, been handed over, sold, or given up by these nations, and we are still on occupied territories. Um, moving on to roll call of attendance, uh, we have quorum today, and I just want that on record because this took months to do. So, uh, my name is Jess, I'm pronounced as she, her, hers. I'm VP Events and Student Affairs, I am chair of this committee. Um, we have our ex officio Corbett here. Um, to help um, us with quorum. So Corbett, if you're able to state your name, your position, your pronouns, and your access needs. Or because you hopped in, I can move on to Akim next. Hi everyone, my name is Akim. I am the SAS counselor. My pronouns are she, her, hers. As for access needs, I am at work right now and I'm having to join this meeting from my phone. Um, so my capacity is just a little bit limited today. Thank you. Thank you, Akam. Kayla? Kayla, if you can't use your mic, um, if you can put it in the chat, that will be great. We'll move on to Paul. And I know you're in a separate meeting right now, Paul, and if you wanna put it in the chat too, that's okay. Hey everyone, sorry, uh, yeah, I just ended my other meeting. So I'm Paul, I'm the SAC counselor this year. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, my accessibility needs are met, but like, yeah, like mentioned, I am at work currently and stepped away into an office. So I will have to be back and forth. If I can't talk, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Akam and Paul for still being here. And Ava? Hi, my name's Ava. Um, I'm just a member at large and my access needs are all met. Thanks, Ava. And we'll move on to society staff. We have our events coordinator, Dipti. Dipti is tabling right now, so I'll move on to guests. Vaibhav. Hi, everyone. My name is Vavo, and I'm um, my pronouns are he, him, his, and uh, my excess needs are met. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. And Corbin and Kayla, whenever you're ready to put in your name, uh, pronouns, and access needs in the chat, I'll read them out loud. We'll go on to the consent agenda. Be it resolved to adopt the consent agenda by unanimous consent. Okay, are there any objections to any of the motions in the consent agenda? So I can go over them quickly because there's a ton of them. So in the fall, um, when we would have ESAC meetings, it was difficult for myself to have these motions passed because we could not meet quorum. So what I had to do was that I had to go to the executive committee, um, put this motion at the executive committee and have it passed there. And then, then if you notice that via email, I would let you know if this passed or not. And then I put it in today's agenda because we finally have um, we finally have um, people to vote on. And so some of the motions that were passed, you can read it in the agenda, but TLDR, um, we passed $334 through executive committee on behalf of ESAC um, for the uh, SFSS and SFU Rec Holiday Hot Chocolate event. And so basically we packed around 400 bags of hot chocolate, um, Rice Krispies, candy canes, and cookies and tabled at Convo Mall, which was super cold. Um, but we gave all of them away. And at the same time, we were also promoting donations for the flood stuff. Um, so that went great. But then on January 11th, we um, 
gave gift cards to students for the COVID-19 student feedback survey on behalf of ESAC. And so be it for the resolve, the exec committee passed a reimbursement worth $1,500. And so then that was taken from the line item. Then on January 18th, we supported um, the Black History Month and Global Shapers Community Vancouver virtual event where ESAC, our committee, passed $3,000 to support this um, event. Um, and that was that happened during all in the fall. And so seeing that there is no discussion or objection, um, we'll move on to um, adoption of the agenda. Actually, Jude is here and I can read Corbett's access needs. So Corbett says in the chat, hey everyone, just a heads up that the laptop I'm using is causing sound issues so I can't hear can't hear clearly what everyone is saying. I'm switching laptops. I'm going to put on the live transcript. Um, and Jude is here. We have a guest from Add On Campus. So hi Jude, please feel free to say your name, your pronouns, and your access needs and your position at the SFSS. Can everyone hear me? Uh, my name is Jude. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, no accessibility needs at the moment. Uh, and I am the out on campus coordinator. Thank you, Jude. Um, and so again, the consent agenda was carried. And so we'll move on to item five, adoption of the agenda. Uh, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as presented. Can I have a mover? I'll move. Paul moves. Can I have a seconder? I'll second. Thank you, Ava. Okay, so we'll go into discussion. Um, if you have any amendments, please add them right now in the chat. Um, I do have two amendments. So I want to amend the agenda to include a motion titled um, nomination of vice chair, and I'll put it in the chat here. The motion reads as, and I'll also put it in the chat, whereas Akam Sidhu has put in her resignation as vice chair for ESAC, whereas International Student Association Chi Bui has expressed interest to be vice chair, be it resolved to approve Chi Bui as vice chair of ESAC. Um, so that is one of the, that's the first, that's the first amendment. And I don't know who this student is, so I'm a little bit confused. Hold on one second. Okay, and I have a second amendment to make, and that is to add at the end of the agenda, which is announcements of resignation from Shashank, Kim, Emma, Justine, and Angela. Um, since no one else added amendments to this meeting, can I have a mover for these batch of amendments? Or I'll move them. Can I have a seconder? I'll second. Thank you, Paul. Okay, now we move back to the main motion, be it resolved to adopt the agenda as amendment. As amendment. <laughs> um, any discussion? Okay, none. We'll put this motion. Ooh, Chi, yes. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to be the vice chair of this committee because I'm not like an official member of this committee yet. So just wondering. Okay, I'm going to add a third amendment. We're going to go back and I'm going to add a third amendment um, that will go before the nomination of vice chair to say, um, let me figure this out one second. Okay, I have to make another amendment that reads, or that is titled um, nomination of counselor. Um, so the motion reads as, whereas Chi Bui has expressed interest in taking the consular position at ESAC, be it resolved to nominate Chi, um, Chi Bui as counselor. Um, can I have, uh, I will move that. Can I have a seconder? Akam. Akam, thank you, Akam. Okay, um, we'll go into discussion. Does anyone have anything to say on this amendment? Okay, we'll move to voting, seeking unanimous consent on the amended motion. Nice. Be it resolved. Um, okay, hold on one second. 
Now that, is there any discussion on the motion? Nothing. Now that the discussion has been exhausted, I'll put the question to a vote. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent on the batch of amendments. Again. Okay. That's all carried. Thanks, everyone. Um, so we'll go to new business. Um, so we have the first one um, titled BIPOC Career Building Series Honorarium. So the motion reads as, Whereas VP Events to Student Affairs, Jess De La Cruz, Operations Organizer Aisha Khan, and Events Coordinator Dipti Chavin have created and hosted the BIPOC Career Series Building as a three-part online workshop event open to BIPOC students to work on the resume, cover letter, and have mentorship from BIPOC alumni, whereas we have confirmed three BIPOC alumni who are um, confirmed to participate in the last part of the series titled Mentorship and Networking Opportunities. Um, Whereas Events and Student Affairs Committee would like to thank these mentors for their labor, time, and energy by providing an honorarium of $300 for each speaker. Be it resolved that ESAC provide an honorarium total to $900 from line item 81720 Events Committee. Um, okay. Can I have a mover? She moves. She moves. Oh, wait, she, I don't think you can move yet because you're not officially on the committee. Oh wait, do I have to be like nominate myself in the um in the like the council meeting? No, you can do it here. Okay. I think. But we can't you not today. You can't move for a second. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, can I have a mover? I'll move. Thank you, Paul. Can I have a second there? I'll second. Okay, we'll move into discussion. I actually need to make an amendment. Um, so one of the speakers were not able to come. So um, the money is going to change. So we're still going to be providing $300 for each speaker, 300 to 600. So uh, the honorarium total is actually going to be $600 from line item 81720. Um, so I'm going to move to make an amendment to change um, Whereas we have confirmed three BIPOC alumni to be changed to two BIPOC alumni. And the second amendment is um, to provide an honorarium total to $600 instead of $900. Um, can I have, I will move that amendment. Can I have a seconder? A second. Thank you, Ava. Um, we'll go into discussion on that amendment. Nothing? Okay. Fastest ESAC meeting ever. We'll move to voting. Seeking unanimous consent on the amended motion. Okay. Seeing as there is um, none, uh, we will move back to the main motion. So be it resolved that ESAC provide an honorarium total to $600 from line item 81720 events committee. Okay. Um, now, uh, okay, so there's no one that passes, that carries as amendment, <laughs> as amended, oh my goodness. Vapav, when you have to do Robert's rules, you're just gonna cry all the time because it's really hard. Um, that carried, we'll move on to 10.2, okay, um, whereas VP Venn student, so this is titled BIPOC Career Building Series Giveaway. Whereas VP Events to Student Affairs, Jess Stella Cruz, Operations Organizer Ayesha Khan, and Events Coordinator Dipti Chavin, again, has created and hosted the BIPOC Career Building Series as a three-part online workshop event open to BIPOC students to work on the resume, cover letter, and have mentorship from BIPOC alumni. Whereas the series were held on February 22nd, March 1st, and March 15th, whereas students who attended all three workshops are el eligible to win the following, um, an iPad, uh, which is only available to one student, LinkedIn Premium for all five students, business cards, all students, and then they get receive uh, free headshots. Um, whereas the cost of these items, excluding the free headshots, cost approximately $5,450. Be it resolved that the Events and Student Affairs Committee allocate up to $5,500 to the BIPOC Career Building Series giveaway items from line item 81720, Events Committee. Um, I can move that motion. Can I have a seconder? Yeah, I'll second. Thanks, Paul. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? Um, 
I can just give a brief update. The BIPOC series went extremely well. Um, majority of the students came for all three of them, um, which was the criteria for them to um, be eligible to win these prizes. Um, we already announced at the last uh, workshop series who won the iPad, which is the big prize. Um, and so that student will have to be notified and connect with Dipti. Um, Dipti, myself, and Aisha is going to have a debrief meeting next week to discuss how we can give the LinkedIn premium and business cards and free headshots for those students. Um, that extra allocation um, to round it up to 5500 is to pay for shipping if needed of the products um, and ex including any taxes for LinkedIn premium and all of that stuff. Um, so that's all I have to say. Is there anyone else on the speakers list? Okay, so seeing that the discussion has now been exhausted, I will put the question to a vote. All those in favor seeking unanimous consent, if you choose to abstain or dissent, please use the raise hand zoom function. Seeing as there is none, the motion has carried. All right, we're speeding through this so quick. Okay, Jude, um, we do have people to leave at 1 p.m. That's why I'm going super fast, but thank you for being here. Now we're on to your mo um, the self-care packages motion, item 10.3. So the motion reads as, Whereas out on campus coordinator is in collaboration with various subtenants and events the student affairs committee to create self care packages for students. Whereas the packages will include the following items tote bag to hold the items candles seed bookmarks and cards handmade soap candles and reusable cutlery. Sorry, there's a double um, candles in there. Whereas the sources of these materials are done locally and made ethically. Be it resolved that ESAC will contribute $5,000 towards these self-care items, these self-care packages from line item 81720 events committee. Um, I can move that motion. Jude, would you like, oh, you can't second. Can I have a seconder? I'll second. Oh, thank you, Ava. Okay, now we'll go into discussion. I'm gonna leave it to Jude to give some background info. Um. So should, do you want me to just like talk about um, the, like how the idea came up or? Yes, how the idea came up, what's in, in the inside um, and why you look to ESAC for support. Okay, cool. Um, so um, I had thought about the, uh, like the idea of like a self-care kit um, before the holidays, because I figured, uh, it's obviously been difficult on students for quite a while with COVID happening um, and that this was kind of like hopefully things were going to change but obviously things were still difficult uh, and so I thought it'd be really cool to offer some type of I guess yeah like a self-care kit that had items to promote self-care um, and really wanting to kind of um, uh, the words. Um, use local um, and try and like use uh, like QT BIPOC businesses like the the Handmade Soap is uh, it's a company based in the U.S. but they have um, like they they also work with Canada but it's an entirely in Indigenous woman owned and operated business. Um, some of the other companies like uh, the, a few of the other companies like are directly in Vancouver. Uh, and so I had brought this to the 5S group, uh, which I think is the like senior staff group. Um, so it has all the other constituency groups and then the subtenants uh, as like a collaboration uh, and everyone was really on board for it. So um, the items that Jess had listed will be like the big purchases um, and then uh, I think myself and a couple other people were wanting to like handwrite um, sort of um, like positive affirmations. Um, I think Chantel from SFPERG had said like there was um, someone, an Indigenous person, who we could print off like little mini coloring books. Um, I just really wanted to offer something to students that just uh, could make them feel better, hopefully. Um, and a lot of these items too, well, I guess like the, the tote bags um, are from a person in Vancouver uh, and he can 
can't remember how you can just he's gonna he's able to put all of um our names like on the bag in red and blue because i think those are the sfss colors um which is really cool so like the tote bag you know they can students can reuse that the um coloring items uh the set is like made um from bamboo and it's supposed to last i think it was like over a thousand uses um, so a lot of these are also just long lasting um and yeah i just thought it'd be really cool i remember like if i when i was in school like this is something that i would have loved to receive um and i think it just i would like to think it would show students that like we are thinking about them and like we care about like their mental health and stuff like that in a kind of unique way sorry for all my rambling no that's Awesome. Thank you, Jude, for giving the background context. Does anyone else have anything on the list um, to ask Jude about these bags? Um, can we shoddy one, Jude? Can you can you reserve some for this committee? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's uh, the thing, too, is um, I guess, like, why uh, is it ESAC? Yeah, uh, the 5,000. And then, like, out of out on campus would cover the rest of the cost. Uh, and so why we were, like I was hoping to get the 5,000 uh, is because it's for 300 bags. So uh, it's not a small amount. Um, and I forgot that things cost money and that there's things like tax. Uh, so uh, I think in total, it'll be at least 10,000, but um, out on campus will, is totally willing to cover the rest of the cost. But um, I think, 45 to 50 will be for the GSS uh, reserved for them. And then the rest um, will be like for our groups. And I definitely think it'd be, um, I have no problem serving some for you folks. Thank you, Jude. Yes. So these bags are costing oh, just a little bit more, but because they are local, majority of the stores are local, except that one store from the US, um, handmade, QT BIPOC owned. Um, they're just fancier and better <laughs> than the, 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 like the regular gift bag. So I'm in favor of this motion, um, seeing that there is no one else on the speakers list. Um, we'll go, I will put the question to a vote. So all those in favor seeking unanimous consent, and if you choose to abstain or dissent, please use the raise hand function in Zoom. Okay, seeing as there is none, the motion is carried. Congrats, Jude. Jude. Just, just sorry. Oh, I couldn't I find didn't... the uh, raise hand function in my phone because I'm taking this. Uh, I'm actually attending this meeting to my phone. Can you run yeah. it because I'm at the. Yeah. Wait, did you. Sorry about that. I, am, I was attending to people here as well. So, um, yeah, I just have a question for Jude. Um, can we use promotional item budget? Oh, oh. yes. Um, sorry, did you have more to add? Um, I was just asking, do you have promotional items budget in your, um, in, in your department? Because I remember uh, a previous uh, out in campus coordinator, they did have a lot many promotional items to give away and I'm not too sure if that is the only uh, promotional items budget because and we might even have some tote bags already from the last uh, shipment i can check today and let you know how many we have left okay yeah uh i'm looking at the previous um budget that ashley the old coordinator had made um and there's um i did there's there's uh, like there's advertising uh, and some resource. Well, yeah, there's not really anything that's kind of, I think, meant um, for promotional stuff. Um, but like we, because COVID is, has been a thing, uh, we haven't really been able to put on a lot of programming. I only was hired uh, at the end of November. So we have um, a fair amount of our budget left. So this was, uh, it's a good opportunity to use up the budget before the end of the fiscal year uh, and for a good cause. Uh, and just as like another, um, I guess, add on, uh, like I've reached out to health and counseling, um, Paula with the SVS um, PO, uh, and then other folks to also just like include 
like swag and promotional stuff in the bags as well. Uh, um, I see. Okay, so you're gonna make a package. Sorry about that. I might have missed two things because I'm at the table here, so I'm like distracted a little oh, bit. But okay, um, that sounds good. Um, if you need help, if you need more promotional items as well, let me know. I can go and find out in our uh, storage as well if we have something to add on to it. Um, so maybe send me an email and let me know what, <laughs> what what you want, and I'll make sure to find it in my event storage as well. I'm sure we have lots of things. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sure. Um, so we'll. That's still the motion still passed because it was majority, um, and I think it's okay still because Dipti was society staff, so like it didn't really like matter but it was just more of a question dipti so i won't count that as a objection um no yeah, that's okay my vote won't be counted as well no <laughs> yeah i just yeah. wanted to ask because clarifying question but so then it did still pass yes. uh unanimously Ooh, robert's rules is kicking my butt okay um motion carried congrats jude um nice okay now we are at 10.4 end of term giveaway reimbursement. This was submitted by ACOM. Motion reads as, whereas the SFSS events committee did an end of term giveaway on the SFSS underscore events um, Instagram account, whereas ACOM studio was tasked with two $25 Starbucks gift card for the winners of the giveaway. Be resolved to reimburse ACOM studio for $50 from X, so they mean line item. Um, ACOM, would, do you want to move this motion? Yes, please. Okay, and I can second this, so we'll move into discussion. Um, I actually want to make an amendment to the line item. Uh, we can take it from line item 817-20, Events Committee. So it will be amended to be resolved to reimburse ACOM Sidhu for $50 Canadian from line item 817-20, Events Committee. Um, Can I get a, I will move that amendment. Can I have a seconder for the amendment? Akam. Thank you, Akam. So we'll go to a discussion on the amendment. Is there any? I can just explain really quickly or I, I yeah, think. Yeah, sure. I'm, okay. Um, this was just a online end of term giveaway that Ava and I did on the SFSS event Instagram page on um, the giveaway was two $25 gift cards for anyone that um, basically commented and tagged a bunch of their friends. I got the gift cards from Starbucks on campus um, a little while ago and I'm just asking to be reimbursed for that. Thank you, Akam. So if this carries um, you can just do a check requisition and then if you need some support doing that um, I can help you complete that form. Um, so seeing as the speakers list has been exhausted, sorry, that's just the amendment. Um, seeking unanimous consent on the amended motion. Okay, seeing as there is none, we'll go back to the main motion um, that has been amended and approved, be it resolved to reimburse ACOM Sidhu for $50 Canadian from line item 8720 um, events committee. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing as there is none, I will put the question to a vote. All those in favor of seeking unanimous consent, if you choose to abstain or dissent, please use the raise hand zoom function. That is carried. Um, thank you, everyone. So, Akam, you can start working on the check requisition now. Um, Jude, we're done your section, so if you need to head out, no worries at all. Um, okay, now we'll move on to item 10.5. Dipti, this is you, if you're able to give us some background context. So 10.5 is transfer budget, submitted by Dipti. Motion reads as, thank you, Jude, bye-bye. Um, the motion reads as, beat resolved to transfer budget spent on the orientation package amount of $3,694.95 from Events Committee Budget 81620 to Events Coordinator Budget 81716. Um, I will move that motion. Can I have a seconder? I'll second. Yeah, I'll second. Ooh, thank you, Ava. Sorry, Paul. 
Um, Akam, I'll answer your question at the end of the meeting. Um, Dibti, are you able to give some background context for this motion, please? Um, yes, I can. So uh, we have ordered 500, actually 503 orientation packages, and each package actually charges uh, $6 something. Um, and uh, we have been thinking of ordering this for a while, and uh, we got a pretty good deal. So finally, we decided we order those um, those packages. So each package include um, it's a it's a cardboard box with all the items that I will list right now. So it's a toothpaste, um, laundry detergent, skittles, and a shampoo, and all the all the sample packs of those. These orientation packs are actually for um, new students, and they can actually. Uh, if they have moved in, say, um, especially during the fall semester or summer semester when the new students move in, this is just a starter pack kind of uh, pack for them. Um, it also has uh, a noodle, microwave popcorn, Tootsie Pops, uh, bubble gum. Uh, there might be plus minus item, but I know there are like over uh, 20 items in each box. We will have an event pretty soon when we hand out those uh, orientation packs. But if you have any ideas for us to hand it out to students, or maybe um, if you guys have time, maybe we can just uh, table in the sub and uh, give it out. We have 500 and 503 and those all are ready to um, hand over. So if you have any question, concern, or need more information, please reach out to me. I'm so sorry, I don't have any information right now in front of me. So I was just like, it's just off the top of my head that, um, and just sharing this with you. Thank you, Dipti. That's awesome. Yes. So we have a whole bunch of orientation packages to give away for students. And even though it's like orientation, it could just be also like an end of the year thing when we table. Um, so something as a nice thing to give. Um, I've noticed that in my portfolio, because it's a new one, um, it was it was previously VP Student Life, but this year I was the first year to do. Uh, VP events and student affairs um, so that student affairs part of my portfolio is literally like anything and so I've noticed that because of COVID it's been very limiting to do events and so what I've been doing with Dipti the committee and just within the society is that I, we've just been giving a lot of free stuff um, ESAC has so much money <laughs> and funds and things to give away for students um, Anything that we can give just to help them for their day-to-day -day stuff at random um, is awesome. And Dipti can catch that so well of what to do for the next best thing. So for example, we did hot chocolate bags and then in December we also gave away 400 um, bags to uh, residents in housing that Chi, Akam, and Ava helped pack, which is amazing. So love that about the student affairs part and then all of the flood stuff. Um, so that's been great. Um, seeing as there is no one else on the speakers list, um, we will go. I will put the question to a vote. So all those in favor, in favor, seeking unanimous, unanimous consent. And then, if you choose to abstain or dissent, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. Okay. Seeing as there is none, the motion is carried. So that transfer budget is approved. Okay. Ten point six. So many motions about money. Person of the year awards. Okay, exciting. Whereas VP of Buttons and Student Affairs is in the process of planning person of the year awards, which is formerly known as women of the year awards. Whereas the event is to take place around early April, 2022. At this point, I think it's going to be like end of April. Um, and the current event plan is to be set in the ballroom for capacity of 100 people. Whereas the SFSS events coordinator, Dipti Chavan has done an initial budgeting cost for the event. So $4,000 for food, $1,000 for prizes, um, like give, like door prizes, $1,200 for the trophies, $1,000 for a setup and teardown costs, and with an estimated total cost of $7,200. Be it resolved that the Events and Student Affairs Committee allocate up to $8,000 for Person of the Year awards, which has the ability to cover extra costs that may arise. Um, I'm going to move this motion. Can I have a seconder? Yeah, I'll second. Thank you, Paul. Okay, so we'll move into discussion. So for background context, person of the, so I changed the name this year, which is kind of bold of me to do so because it was always done um, in March because it was Women of the Year Awards. 
But then I was like, okay, well, that's kind of not so inclusive because I changed it. It didn't include, um, and Jennifer last year, she did a great job of explaining like what a woman, what the word woman can mean. So it's still including trans women. Um, however, um, I changed it this year to be titled Person of the Year Awards so that it does include uh, trans women um, and specifically also uh, including non-binary folks to apply uh, for this award as well as black, indigenous, and people of color. Um, so that is a target audience for these awards. I'm still in the planning stages of this event and we're hoping to do it in the student union building at the ballroom. Um, and we may have to do it and push it to end of April before I go. And so um, the awards are planning also not to be doing it um, based on faculty anymore because I thought that that was very limiting um, for the past um, few years. Um, and so the idea that we have right now is to give around almost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, around eight awards um, regarding sustainability, student life and involvement, diversity and inclusion. So anyone who has done work um, in the EDI uh, sector, uh, promotion of equity. Um, another one would be accessibility or access and inclusion award. Um, then another one award would be um, for, for an indigenous student who has done work within the indigenous community. Another award um, would be for a black student, um, either a black woman, black non-binary person, um, or a two-spirit person. Um, who has done work in the black community, and then another one um, who has done work um, in the two-spirit and LGBTQ community. So it's very different from past Women of the Year awards. Women of the Year awards in past years has been based on faculty. Um, and I just, to me, it felt like a, it was very a popularity contest um, with the way that it was being voted on and um, all of that things. So I wanted to make sure that this year I do these awards not in um, March because it was um, IWD earlier this year, but I wanted to change it up. I wanted to have more of an equity focus when I do this work so that it's more inclusive for the people who can apply. Um, because I do want Black, Indigenous, and students of color to apply for this award who are women, who are non-binary, um, and who um, are very diverse. And so that is where um, I have done a lot of changes for these. Um, for um, So yes, is there any other th um, questions or comments or lists before we go into um, voting? I also just want general feedback if that's okay. Like, what do you think? Because <laughs> it's very different from previous Women of the Year awards. Okay, so Vapav has a question. So how do we take nominations for this event? So that is where I, have some, I need some support on our next ESEC meeting where I present to you what the heck is going to happen. Um, nominations is usually done like through a web survey where the, all of the students can vote. Um, but how do we do so in a way where it just doesn't seem like it's a popularity and where it's equitable voting and where you actually look through the portfolios of the candidates? So my idea is that the candidates submit um, a package of the work that they've been doing within the community, um, kind of just saying like, I've worked on this project, this is how it's impacted people, um, this is what I hope to do in the future kind of thing in the past year. And so that is my idea of how to take nominations for the event. I don't think we have the capacity to form an actual committee, so it just may have to be a web survey to students. Um, but next ESAC meeting, when I do present it to you, I would love to hear some feedback with more details. Great question though, thank you. Okay, is there anyone else on the speakers list? Okay, seeing that the discussion has now been exhausted, I will put the question to a vote. All those in favor of seeking unanimous consent, again, if you choose to abstain or dissent, please raise your hand on Zoom. Okay, seeing as there is none, the motion has carried. We'll move on to 10.7. Um, whereas Chi Bui has expressed interest in taking the counselor position at ESAC, be it resolved to nominate Chi Bui as counselor for this committee. 
Um, I will move this. Can I have a seconder? Akam. Thank you, Akam. Okay, so um, because um, Akam, this is her last meeting today as she put in a resignation, um, she has expressed interest to be vice chair for like the next month and a half, which is helpful just in case like I can't chair a meeting or anything like that or I need some support during a meeting. Um, I've worked with Chi before. Um, she has helped um, and attended like literally almost every council meeting as the ISA alternate, um, helped me pack, um, helped me and Dipti pack all of the bags and table um, when it was the elections. So Chi has been super involved. Um, Chi, do you want to say anything uh, for your little nomination? Um, I just want to say that I have always been wanted to like um, be, in, be involved in this committee because well, events has been, well, I have like never been in like, I've never been like organized like an event before. And then um, Jess was like asking me like to, I mean, like I have started to like help in Jess with like um, events before and I, and I feel like I really love it. So that's how I wanted to be in this event. So yeah. Thanks, Chi. That's awesome. Okay. Um... So seeing as the speakers list is exhausted, I will put the question to a vote. So I'm seeking unanimous consent that Chi takes up this position. And if you choose to abstain or dissent, um, please use a raise hand zoom function. Okay, seeing as there is none, that carries. Congrats, Chi. And then the second, mo the other motion is also about you. Um, so it reads as, whereas Acom Studio has put in her resignation as vice chair for the Events and Student Affairs Committee, ESAC, whereas International Students Association, Chi Bui, has expressed to be vice chair, be it resolved to approve Chi Bui as vice chair of ESAC. Um, can I have a mover? Acom. Acom, thank you, Acom. Can I have a seconder? I'll second. Thank you, Paul. Um, okay, so we just nominated Chi as the counselor, and now she is expressing to be vice chair. And so they have um, vice chairs will support you if you cannot chair a meeting, if something urgent happens, but you still want that meeting. Or if during a meeting I need to step out, she's going to be like, okay, I got you. And then she can temporarily chair during that time. Um, so that's what a vice chair does. And so I think Chia has a lot of experience with Robert's rules because of council, <laughs> council meetings um, and these meetings. And she's also on the um, external and community affairs meetings where they do dev sessions on just how to be a good counselor. She also attends the dev sessions for council. Um, so she has some experience under her belt. Um, Chi, I don't know if you want to say anything. I'm putting you on the spot though. Um, I don't know what to say, but um, <laughs> um, if I could get approval from everyone, then that would be really appreciated. <laughs> I think it'll be great. Okay, so seeing as the speaker's list is exhausted, I'll put the question to a vote. So all those in fa favor seeking unanimous consent, um, if you choose to abstain or dissent, please use the raise hand function on soup. Okay, seeing as there is none, the motion is carried. Um, congratulations, everyone. We literally did like how many motions in less than 50 minutes. Um, whew, okay, thank you. I know we went really fast and I know I talked a lot, but if you need clarification on anything that has been passed, please text me and then we can sort it out. But they all carry, so that's awesome. So I'm going to be looking for some support in the next few weeks. Um, Akam, or so Akam's not going to be here anymore, but Ava, Chi, and Kayla, and Paul, if you can keep coming to the next few meetings for ESAC until I go just to keep passing these motions, um, and to talk about it and give me some feedback on the events that would be so helpful because um, we're on a time crunch here. Okay, moving on to discussion items, 11.1 .1, report on portfolio. So our last ESAC meeting um, was like in the fall uh, when we were able to meet and have a formal one because um, we couldn't meet quorum. And so since the fall, I've worked on so many projects. Um, one of the biggest ones on my portfolio that's been outstanding um, 
was the flood donation drive uh, to support the BC flood victims. That went so well. We received um, so many donations, monetary and physically. Um, council was updated on it, but um, we were able to give it to remote Indigenous communities. Um, and we even got like helicopters involved to give them away, which was so awesome. Um, other things that we worked on um, was the um, gift bags to residents during Christmas time, so that went well. Um, I helped decorate the sub uh, for Halloween and Christmas, um, so that was super cute. Ava and Acom did an SFSS end of term giveaway, um, so two students won those. Um, Dipti helped to do Valentine's Day gift basket, which I still have to post a picture of. Um, but the student won two of them, so that's awesome. A huge shout out to Ava for helping me literally keep this Instagram page alive because it's probably one of the hardest things that I have trouble with. Um, so she's done amazing. Um, I collaborated with Soka to do Black History Month Movie Mondays and shout out to Dipti for helping host those events because I was in class. Um, we did a gondola town hall, so yay us. Um, for having a gondola now for the next few years that's been approved. Um, we did a COVID-19 press conference. Um, that was insane. We passed motions to get masks and hand sanitizers for the building. Um, I've been helping staff with um, subtabling, some room bookings, and um, which I will get to for the next discussion item. So that's just been on my portfolio. Um, in the next month and a half, I'm going to help transition VapeHav, which is also, I think, the next discussion item. So we'll talk about that later. Um, are there any other questions or comments for this report on my portfolio of what I've done so far? I'm pretty sure I'm missing a whole ton. I've also been in, like on so many hiring committees. We recently just hired the MSC journalist for the SFSS. Um, so that has also happened. Um, but if you want to know more, please attend council meetings where I give like an actual report. Okay, so there's that. Thank you though. Um, let's move on to 11.2, sub tabling, room bookings, lockers, and sub event application. Okay, so as you know, we were closed for like a month because of Omicron. Um, now that the cases are dying, we opened on February 22nd. And since then, um, we have had um, more services open within the student union building. And so I can share what is happening um, with that. Okay, so on February 22nd, the sub reopened. And on this day, you could also um, open up for tabling. And we have three locations for tabling. One of them, Dipti, is at right now, which is level 3000 at the social stage. Um, the other one is at level 3000, the social stairs, which is the end of the hallway, and also level 2000, which is a cafeteria. So if, Paul, you want to do something with the Athlete Advisory Committee, you can totally table um, ACOM with SAS, CHI with ISA, AVA with um, FAST Mentorship, if you have any, or like even you could do that under SAS too. You can totally table with um those services and you just do so through your portal that you have access to with your student ID and you do this uh, five days in advance of the day that you want to table and five days in advance from when the events coordinator um, when the building coordinator for events so it's Shelly she can look through that and then on March 1st the meeting rooms were available to book and so again five business days so here you can host meetings small events with your union or club you can do painting, crafting, whatever you want to do. Just make sure that it's aligned with our COVID guidelines as well. And it's in line with our room capacity and it's whatever it is based on that specific room. Um, study rooms, uh, level 4,000, they are still at an individual capacity due to COVID. Um, here, just because it's you, you can also take your mask off. Um, to service immunocompromised students and students who live with immunocompromised people. The music booths on level 1000 is temporarily used uh, for those students. Um, we also got air purifiers for those rooms um, and currently they are being overseen by DNA. 
And so if you, you're, uh, if you are immunocompromised yourself or live with an immunocompromised family member, you can um, book those rooms and then just email DNA for that support. For events, um, the ballroom is about to open really soon. And so um, we have a new position. So our building coordinator, Shelly, um, is also in charge of uh, the event side of things for the uh, student, union, student union building. And so when you want to have an event for this um, space, um, there's some logistics that you have to answer in this uh, form. And then to receive this form, just email Shelly and her contact information is at the end. Um, so events under 30 people, 15 business day minimum. For events over 30 people, 20 business days minimum. And then you'll fill out this sheet that has the contact info, date and time, event details, food and beverage, setup and other stuff. Um, so that is happening for that. And if you want to meet with the building coordinator events, just email Shelly at sub.bookings at sfss.ca. Are there any questions for um, tabling, room booking, events in the sub or whatnot? Vipav, I think like you're the lucky one coming into this because I was not able to do as much because of COVID. <laughs> so all the groundwork has been done. Now you are you have full range. Okay, so yeah, so for the document, um, just email Shelly for this document. So sub.bookings at sfss.ca. Okay, are there any other questions? Cool. Okay, now we're moving on to. I thought Acom. I think you have to go soon because you're working. And Paul, I don't know when you have to leave, but thank you for lasting this long and making it through this meeting. We're on the last discussion item before announcements, so we're almost there. Eleven point three incoming VPESA and transition. Um, so Vip, have want to introduce yourself? Tell us about yourself. What you hope to do? Um, as a TLDR. Me and Vape have still have to meet to regroup. I've been super busy with um, just literally all of the projects and the sub stuff in COVID <laughs> for the past month. So it's been very difficult to have uh, time to meet, but hopefully we get to meet next week. Um, so do your introduction. What do you hope to do? Um, you are going to be chair of ESAC and MSAC. So tell us about yourself. Thank you, Akam. Bye-bye. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Vavav and I'm fourth year uh, joint major students in business and econ and uh, I'm incoming VP ESA. Um, so my main agenda for uh, having this position is basically to have more events like collaborating with clubs. You know, we have so many clubs like we uh, literally uh, have more than 200 clubs. So uh, it's just like uh, I'll try to collaborate more with them like and have as many uh, events as possible. And uh, other than that, like, I'll try to have, like, uh, some personal SFSS events, um, like, you know, some talent uh, acquisition or, like, some um, talent shows, basically, which I uh, proposed in my platform, too. So that's something I'm looking up to. Thank you. Thanks, Apep. Does anyone have questions for him? Ava, I don't know if you'll be here for the um, incoming, but you've been really solid to help this committee thrive. So um, I know that you were unable to do a lot because of COVID um, and the sub closures and all that stuff, but you'll be able to do a lot with VPUB if you want to continue. <laughs> um, Chi, you're on the speakers list. Um, I have a question. How are you going to make the events like more accessible for everyone? It's just like, uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. So basically it's just like uh, inclusion is like something like that I'm looking forward to as well. Um, it's just like collaborating more with you guys, taking suggestions, you know, having more meetings with Jess as of now, uh, you know, taking her suggestions, uh, like how she planned, like, you know, these things. And uh, like, I know it was COVID times, but there are still like new experiences involved. 
and uh, you know so other than that like also like i'm already in touch with a couple of clubs so you know we are trying to focus on more uh, like small sports groups like basically like which are not yet covered like uh, some table tennis like the clubs are there they are not very active since like a couple of years so i'm trying to you know bring more people into that like we have so many uh, tables but not enough events for that so it's just like yeah uh, trying to bring those clubs uh, as well like which have not been really active like trying to bring more people in that so it's just like uh, it's going to include everyone so like making it accessible for more people thank you cool thank you does anyone else have any other questions for vpav okay I have a lot to learn about actually <laughs> it's just like yeah i just was watching videos about like the robots rule and uh you know i already came to know that like it is one of the hardest things here so <laughs> i was like like let's all you know get some idea about that but like um you know looking at this meeting like i think so uh, it's still a lot of to a lot of things to take care about and um i'm hoping to have a meeting with you soon jess and uh, you know we'll sort it out yeah for sure yeah, how many months am I into this job and Robert's rules is still hard for me. But Corbett, Corbett and Gabe... <laughs> Don't scare me. <laughs> it's just me, though. Um, but yeah, so much about this role and what I've been learning in the past year. Um, you're an employer. You have staff to manage. There's contracts to look over. There's documents to look over. There's a whole new building to oversee. I think it was so different in my position because we opened up the student union building during my time. Um, we were open at a full capacity, then we closed it, then we were hybrid because of COVID. Also working during a pandemic and being on and off, being in person and remote has been insane. Um, but I'll save my sappy speech until our next last ESAC meeting because I won't cry just yet. Um, announcements. It's we're like done. Two more months. Few more months. More like a month and a half, and I have a lot. <laughs> a to month do. and a half. Technically, so, yeah. Woo! Um, these meetings are pretty fun for me because it's like super chill. Isak is amazing, um, but seeing as there is no one on the speakers list, we'll move on to announcements. Um, so I have two. The next Isak meeting is March thirty first. Just a quick question, oh, just yeah. like before we proceed. Like, uh, how many members from this? meeting are still going to be with like working with me so i can be in touch with them you know Ooh, is anyone still interested in being an esac paul i know is um graduating so as me so we can't be on there chi and ava i don't know and kayla if you're putting on this oh ava said yes okay nice perfect um also for anyone sitting on this committee because i've worked with you i am more than happy to be a reference for literally anything um, so just message me and I can be your job reference or whatnot, but I'll save that for the last one. Um, so move on to announcements. Um, okay. Next ESAC meeting is March 31st from 12 to 2 p.m. Um, I put two hours just in case, but I guess we can make everything done in an hour if I talk really fast and if we put the motions through really quickly. So we'll see if we even take those two hours. The second announcement is a resignations. Um, so the resignations were from Shashank, who was a non-executive counselor. Um, and then the other resignations were from the student at larges, uh, from Kim, Emma, Justine, and Angela. Um, it was due to various reasons that um, I don't wanna disclose, just for confidentiality purposes, um, but they are no longer sitting on this committee. Um, and that's all. Okay, we'll move on to adjournment. Um, be it resolved to adjourn the meeting at 1.05 p.m. Can I have a mover? Ava? Ava, and can I have a seconder? I'll second. Paul, okay, is there any discussion on adjourning the meeting? Okay, seeing as there is none, the motion is carried. Thanks everyone for coming.